Hello, Bobby McSquiggums here, and we are about to do battle in Xenonauts. That's right, a battle. Um, episode 72, I want to say? And I guess we'll get going on that. The bomb pod is engaged. Go for it. Alright, so. We're going to get started. Uh, things seem a little bit laggier. Steam has like 47 updates. It's downloading all at the same time. I don't know how long the load times are going to be. I'm going to try to fill the dead space with me babbling. I might have to slow down my talk. I, I don't I don't know why it's actually delaying it as much as it did. It took me almost a minute and a half for the first Xenonauts configuration splash screen, whatever it is, before the game launches, actually came up. So that's a little bit weird. It's a little strange, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it's okay because we are ready for some ground combat. The highest ranking Xenonaut in a mission is the Mission Commander. Providing a global morale bonus whilst alive. Or whilst alive. Alright guys. So. <sighs> stuff is happening. Things are going according to Pollen. Or plan as it were. And yeah. We're, we're doing pretty good in the Xenonaut world. The Xenonaut realm. Uh, we're getting closer to the end game. We're not quite there yet. We're getting fairly decently close. We still have quite a few things left coming down the pipe. Um, we have interceptors coming. We have is it strike cruisers, I think they're called. There's a few alien vessels still coming down the pipe. Uh, battleships and... Uh, are we fighting carriers now? No, I think carriers are another one. As well as, I guess, the mothership. I don't know the actual end game yet, so I am still slightly out of the loop in that regard. I will say I do enjoy the 360 degree vision that the Sentinel armor actually gives you. That is one of the most fantastical and wonderful things ever invented in the history of mankind. In addition to that, we have Androns, so. Nothing to worry about from our Reapers uh, this time, ladies and gentlemen. But I suppose getting into some sort of cover might be a wise course of action, so we're going to attempt it. We have found the landing ship, which is nice. I think I've been taking a lot of uh, easier routes lately, as far as my, uh, my battle choices, because, well... The last few times it took the tougher route, I kind of got owned, so I'm a little more hesitant now than I was before to actually go with the more challenging combats. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, or to my detriment. It could be, could be um, wise decision making, depending on who you ask. Decisions are made. Often. Eh, why don't we go here? We know there's an Andron somewhere in that general region, so avoiding that for now may be a smart choice. We'll see, though. Alright, it looks like we're not quite to the point where we can just do whatever we want. We're getting pretty close to it, so there is a that going on. I decided to, well... I've decided on a question already, and I've decided that I will give it to you earlier than later, so you guys can forget by the end of the uh, episode. And then I can be like, oh, well, nobody apparently liked my question this time. I don't know why I'm talking in this voice. It's not very good. But before I do that, I figure I might as well answer my last question that I there asked. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a question before, though. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, it's all starting to run together. But, uh, I asked what time travel, it might have been two episodes ago. Anyway, uh, where in, t in history would you have wanted to go? Back in time, it could be a second in the past, it could be a hundred seconds in the past, it could be a thousand years, a million years, forty billion years, I don't know. But, anywhere in history, anywhere in known time or unknown time, that uh, you would like to travel, and I kind of... It's like, well, I don't know where I want to go, I really got to think about it. Which basically means, I don't know where I want to go, I really got to think about it, but in a much more weird and messed up voice. But I had actually decided, as a relatively obvious uh, answer, before the end of the episode. But I decided to make you guys wait. So, long story short, I will reveal my answer to all of you now. And the answer is actually quite simple. 
given my propensity for fantasy adventure books and readings of that nature, stuff with magic and mayhem, that I can't really say I've ever been into the Harry Potter thing. But hey, I don't judge. I don't judge. It's just not my scene. Anyhow, uh, I do enjoy quite a bit of RPG type games. I like medieval weaponry and stuff of like that. Name. Anyway, the the medieval times basically, not the actual restaurant in Florida, which I have been to, and it is fantastic. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, or fantastic if I didn't like choke on my own word there. Uh, medieval times, amazing. They they chop a chicken basically in half and give you half a chicken. They give you this amazing uh, some sort of potato thing and a pretty decent soup. It was really good. The, uh, the show was, wasn't too bad either, so yeah, Medieval Times, good place to go. Definitely check it out if you're ever in Kissimmee in Florida. Fun stuff. Anyhow, moving past that. Yeah, Medieval Times, um, the Middle Ages, basically. The see, like, honestly, I would love to, to, like, take up blacksmithing. I think that would be amazing. A lot of fun. It'd be miserably hot, and I'd be, probably be really sad about that part of it. But everything else, it just seems so... It's such a cool idea, such a cool principle to actually go and be able to make your own weapons and everything else. It just sounds really cool. And you're going to be strong as heck. I mean, blacksmiths constantly pounding, you know, with a hammer and holding the metal and... Fl I mean, I'm sure I'd be really terrible at it for quite a while, but I mean, if I stuck with it, I can imagine I'd be, like, ridiculously buff by the end of it, so... Yeah, I'd like to see uh, blacksmithing. Oh, oh, they're trading shots. Oh, he hit him twice! Look at that. Cop did work. Oh, he dodged bullets. This guy's amazing. He's my hero. I'm going to try everything I can to save that dude. He's in a very bad spot, and he's achieving much hatred and ire from the enemy. Hmm. But yeah, medieval times. Uh, swords, axes, pole arms. I mean, you name it. I'm a big medieval weaponry fan. It's one of the things I really, really enjoy. In fact, I had to do a research paper when I was graduating from high school. It was one of our uh, English thingies that we had to do. And eh, I'm kind of torn whether I want to go up here or not. We'll do it anyway. It sure seems like there's a lot, a lot of... Uh-oh. Maybe we'll land for now. Really? How many people am I going to see? I can actually see him from there, that's interesting. Uh, anyhow, a lot of uh, medieval weaponry and other things of that nature, <laughs> excuse me, have been uh, have been a thing of mine that I've uh, enjoyed, armor, shields, I mean, you name it, I really, really enjoyed it. And I did a research paper on that when I was in high school, and I actually, uh, the teacher was like, you know, normally that stuff is actually pretty boring to me. But however you, uh, she's like, I'm not sure how you did it, but the way you presented it, it was actually quite amazing. Of course, you know, I fancy myself as something of a writer well, once upon a time, not really anymore. Um, so that was kind of a nice uh, compliment to be paid by my English teacher of all of the people. So I didn't do super amazingly well in school, I won't lie. Uh, I kind of didn't apply myself much in school, so I was one of those people. Had all the potential, didn't live up to any of it. It's quite sad, really. Alright, well, we need to get Redith into a position to do something, so we're going to go charge on over and do it. And hopefully it's enough to finish this guy. It is, and that makes me quite happy. Alright, this also poises her for possibly running down that guy if our sniper fails, which is not a terrible choice either. In fact, I like that idea so much that I'm going to position Nicole Hernandez in the same exact position. And there we go. And that means that Splooch gets to continue the sweeping clearage toward the landing ship itself. Alright, um, Rippity Dip is going to make his way that way. And Kira Legan... Eh. I guess we'll stick you up here, and then you maybe you can get a shot across the way. Once upon a time in Mexico. I'll be taking knee for now, though. Alright, and then what do we have? We have Mutanot, who I think I'm going to go stick over here. Assuming nothing terrible happens, and he survives everything, we should be able to do some Annihilation in the next turn. And it will be sweet, sweet nice. 
And I guess we could Yad Varnus up over here. Still alive, still kicking. Not dead. Doing his his job. Doing doing work. It's good. Alright. And with that, we'll end this turn. So, question. The question of the day. Oh, poor guy. He tried. He survived so much, only to fall. Eventually. I wonder if he's still up there. Question of the day. Could be Coke or Pepsi. Could be Sprite or 7-Up. I decided something a little more elemental and a little more subjective, I guess. I mean, Coke or Pepsi, it's different, but it's the same. I mean, it's minor differences. I prefer Pepsi to Coke. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not the question. The question is this. Hot or cold? I know. Seems pretty simple. Hot or cold? Do you prefer to be in higher temperature climates, or do you prefer to be in lower temperature climates? What is your preference? Me personally, I always prefer cold. Because I believe I've even said it before here. It's my personal opinion and belief that you can always, and I do mean always, put more clothing on if you're cold. Whereas if you're hot, there's only so many clothes that you can take off. And that, right there, is the easiest way to explain it for me, I guess. If you're hot, take more clothing off. If you're cold, you have to put more clothing on. You can only take so much off, you can always put more on. I mean, eh, I don't know. Those are my thoughts. Now, I suppose in extreme conditions, eh, you can probably survive longer? I, I, I don't know. I imagine you can probably survive longer in extreme heat as opposed to extreme cold. Now, I'm not saying like a volcano, but say, you know, like desert temperatures get really hot and if you're not careful you can dehydrate all that, you know, wonderful, not fun stuff. Um, I imagine it's probably you're able to survive longer in extreme heat for any length of time as opposed to extreme cold. Extreme cold, you get hyperthermia and you die pretty quickly. So. I don't know. I'm just saying in general. I'd rather be a little cold than hot. That's just me. It's just me. Maybe well, maybe a few other people agree. I, I don't know. I think the odds are there's at least a few people who are uh, echoing my sentiment. And I, even um, even my wife's son says that uh, he originally. I think I'm trying to remember exactly what he told me. Originally, he would always prefer to be hot than cold, but he said lately he's been kind of thinking about it, and he said that it makes a little bit more sense, the way I uh, present the argument, because my wife would always rather be hot than cold, but then she complains just as much about the summer heat as she does about the winter snow, so... I don't know. I don't know. Seems a little wishy-washy to me. Seems a little wishy-washy to me. Definitely not committing on that. But yeah, me, always, I'd rather be in cold temperatures than hot. Now, of course, my tolerance for cold temperatures is a little higher than most people. So that may play into things a little bit as well. So just keep that in mind. All right, well, I guess Yod can go around the corner, take a look around. I think maybe I'm going to go in this direction, take a knee. How close? And... I suppose I could go here and look this way. Can I take a knee? I cannot. And then Splooch could even get behind this, look this way, and take a knee. Going into burst fire mode and making all sorts of stuff happen. What? Alright, there we go. So, hot or cold? Hot or cold? Hot or cold? Well, at least this way there's not going to be 400 billion answers. Not that I minded. I, I do enjoy seeing the different snack foods. I found, I found it weird. The oddest one to me was uh, chicken wings as a snack food. I suppose, but I mean, like, to me, I want to have it like 10, 15, 20 chicken wings. Uh, anything under that, uh, it's just not worth it. It makes me sad. It's one of those, like, why would you give me such good tasting food only to give me so little? I want large quantities of chicken wings. I want to eat them until I don't feel like eating anymore. That's, that's kind of how I roll. That's how I do it. 
So I feel very cheated if I don't get like a big chunk of chicken wings or a big batch. However you want to enunciate it, it's fine. I want large quantities of chicken wings, and if you do not give it to me, then you are shorting me, and I am offended greatly. So, just saying. Give me chicken wings, and give me many of them. In fact, I think we might even be going to get some wings again in a week or two, which is going to be delicious. I'm not going to get the uh, jerk chicken ones. I don't really like the jerk chicken here. I don't know, personally, if it's, if it's done 100% right or not. I mean... There's places that I don't like, like I don't like most of the Chinese food here, and I don't, I don't think I like any of the Chinese food I had back in uh, Florida. I mean, I could eat some of it, and I could eat it, but it wasn't something I enjoyed. There's one or two places here that I really like, and then like 50 terrible ones that I can't stand. And we keep trying different ones to see, but I'm always disappointed. There's only one place I want her to go every single time when she goes and gets Chinese food. And she doesn't often go there, and it makes me kind of sad. And it's like, oh, why can't you go to the place I like? So, yeah, but I guess if you don't try things, you don't know if you're going to like them or not. But, uh, back to the thing. Jerk chicken. Uh, I'm not sure if I like it or not. The spices that they use, the first time I had it, it wasn't terrible. This last time I had it, it was pretty bad. I didn't enjoy it at all. I won't lie, it was, it was pretty meh overall. Pretty meh overall. Alright, let's go open up the, the tuna can here and see what's in. Nothing? Really? At all? Totally empty. Well, I gotta say, that was not what I was expecting. Alright, well I guess Nicole Hernandez could probably get here maybe, take a knee and... <coughs> excuse me, let me clear my throat here for a sec. That's a little better. Um, Maybe we uh, make something happen here, I don't know. I'm expecting a horrible grenade to murder me again. I suppose if I move here, I have a decent shot that way. Of course, I'm blocking her now. Not that she's going to do much anyway, so I guess I'll just move her out of the way. There we go. We'll get Redith into... I don't know. We'll go there. We'll get her into that position. That's fine. And hopefully she'll shoot at whatever comes out of this thing. There we go. She's facing it. She has the TUs to do stuff. And we're going to get our boy Splooch up into a uh, place. And with that, we have breached the ship. We haven't seen any alien activity on the ship yet, but we see our final guy that we're going to have to deal with here in just a second. He's going to try to hide on the roof. It's not going to work. It's going to be fine. It's fine. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next time I'm in Florida, I'm making it a point. It's probably going to be in February, but I'm going to make it a point to make sure I remember to go check out some jerk chicken from other places. Because I'm really curious as to whether or not I actually like it or if they all taste the same. Wow, that was a heck of a shot. Good job, Atomic Potato, buddy. Look at you. You had accuracy issues the second you switched from um, being our rocket launching guy, our rocketeer. And now... You're apparently pretty accurate. You just shot at like an upward slant onto a second story or on the roof of a building from down below while you were suppressed. That takes some guts, man. That takes some guts. Alright. Speaking of guts, I feel like I'm going to regurgitate here in a minute. Ugh. A little bit of acid reflux kicking back. It's fine. Um, I haven't really eaten today. I should probably take care of that at some point as well. It's okay. Eating can wait. Well, let's see here. What if I go there? Feeling pretty confident with my folks right now. Um, we'll go through here with our fellow guy here. Here, 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 here. Alright, we'll get into a position right there. And we'll have Nicole Hernandez go in as well. She seems to be, like, burning through TUs much quicker for some reason. Maybe it's just me. It just seems that way, though. Everybody dip can't do anything. Let's go take a look with our shield unit in here. There is nothing. Alright. Well, we can get our shield unit over this way. And I guess... Go around that way. 
I don't know, I almost alt tabbed out, which would not have been what I was trying to do, so I'm glad that I did not do that. Let's move you over slightly, and move you down here. Alright. And with that, we've moved nearly everyone. And I do mean nearly, not quite everyone. But virtually everyone. Move them into there, and yeah, looks like we will easily be able to handle this. Business is getting handled, as per norm. Well, maybe not norm, but it's getting handled. We're doing it. The landing ships aren't much of a challenge to us any longer, which is nice. Alright, so what I think I'm going to do is, I'm, see I'm kind of torn right now. I think I'm going to lob this here. That did make it. That suppressed. That's what I was going for. And I'm going to get out of the way. Might eat a shot in the butt, but I didn't. I'm good. I think we're going to have this happen. Sweet, he missed. Perfect. That worked out tremendously well. Alright, and goodbye, sir. And with that being done, I mean, it's really, well, somewhat simplistic. We're just going to shoot this guy, and then uh, I suppose, ooh, I can't make that. Interesting. Hmm gonna go to shot anyway. Oh, I can't do it at all. That's really interesting. Hmm. Well? Well, that, that is, um, that's something. Take a knee, take a look this way. Alright. And I guess we're going to, uh, try this out. See how it works. And hope it actually does. Because if it doesn't, we'll... We might take a singular shot. We're just going to try and see. Oh, it worked beautifully. Oh, it's not over yet. Apparently somewhere in some buildings... Oh, no, it is over. All right, so there we go. So injured for one day, three days, three days. Everybody is still alive. We have colonels and commanders and sergeants and majors and lieutenants and more commanders and even more colonels with no stat gains at all. But overall, not too, too bad. 69.4 thousand. That actually seems pretty low for a landing ship. Maybe I shouldn't have used that uh, grenade there. But that's pretty much going to do it right there. Um, let's take a look at our research. I don't think we're going to make it to that place. Research is going good, but it's not quite done yet. Well, I'm going to break off the episode here, guys. It's a little bit of a shorter one, but that's okay. It's okay. I will see you guys tomorrow with more Xenonauts. Until then, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later. <laughs>